Hey, this is Catherine Lane, and it is time for Catherine's Conversations in the Country, the cold version. Yes, it got a little chilly on me. We might be doing bonfires on the next <laughs> next round we do, but uh, we're talking today with Robert White. Robert is the executive director for NAMI, that is the National Alliance for Mental Illness, the Tri-County Piedmont. Absolutely. Chapter. Yes. Yes. We got, got, it. got it. We got it. We got it. I can't string two memories together in my brain right now, but I was able to manage that. But, uh, you know, mental illness has been my focus. As many of you know, we lost our son, Aiden, our grandson, Aiden, on March 20th um, of 2023. And of course, naturally, that has catapulted my life in a different direction. Uh, my focus now is to try to help as many people as I can. Um, with mental illness, with resources, and with some information, because uh, talking and information is absolutely life-saving. So, Robert, thank you for, sh- well, you came from Rock Hill. That's I not- did. Uh, out to Clover. But so. the, gro- the my roots come back to Clover when I moved here many, many years ago, so it, it is a great feeling to be back from where it all started. It was right here in uh, Clover, South Carolina. Now, how did you end up at NAMI? I've got to ask. Well, uh, I spent uh, a very wonderful career in 35 years as a paramedic uh, in EMS. And after 35 years, I said, well, it's time to, to change a different route. And I wanted to spoil my grandbabies a little bit. Uh, I did that for several months. And then I, I got bored. Yeah. And NAMI, just, I wasn't looking. And that's why I think it's from above. NAMI just fell into my lap three years ago, and I I couldn't be happier. And you've learned a lot, and you have professionals on board that help people uh, with the journey uh, through the different challenges that people face with mental illness. And, you know, a lot of people are having big feelings right now about a lot of things. We just had a very contentious Mm -hmm. uh, political battle Um, that's been mm -hmm. decided. People have big feelings on on both sides of the fence. Um, There are some people that are, are... happy and joyful and, and and feel good about what happened. There are people who are, are, are that just took it very, very pers- personally. I know at my office, um, you know, the word was just, just don't talk about it in the halls because mm-hmm. you don't, you don't want to hurt anyone. And some people are actually mentally affected by this. Unfortunately, you're, you're correct. Um, mental health impacts so many things on everyday life, uh, just like the election. I have a passion of, for somebody that my philosophy or my boundaries think this individual is going to be the best. And you may, on the other hand, be just as favorable with the opposition. Is I think we're relaxing because of some of the mental, mental health wellness issues that we have. We are unable to communicate effectively at times because of this, because we're so passionate about our calling. We need to get back taking care of our mental wellness. We, we need to get back to where you and I can communicate and respectfully disagree, hug, and let's carry on our journey today. It's just our passion is out there. We need to have that passion. It's good for the world, but we got to understand it. Not everybody is going to agree with me. Well, that's right. And and I think you hit the nail on the head. It, 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 it's the passion. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel so strongly about mm-hmm. something. Um and uh and it just bubbles up and this is and this is where you are and hopefully we can all you know, what are some tips on how we can, you know, get along in this post-election well, season? Post-election season, there are just, there's a lot of things that, that we can do. And first is, is respect, you know, respect the results of our national election. It was, it's been verified and re-verified. It's still going through the process. So we have to first understand and trust the process. Next is you got to understand I'm only responsible for my one piece, my one vote my family, my friends, even though we may have different views, is make sure that I advocate to do the right thing. Wherever your passion is, let's do it. If it's a vote, if it's getting out and let's just taking a walk and let's have that wonderful debate about whatever issue it is, not just with politics, but how do you cook? How do you drive your car? How do you wash your car? There's so many things that people in today's society have a hard time connecting with. So we got to make sure we have some firm foundations or some firm boundaries to uh, go forward. Yeah. And reestablish your friendships. I mean, no matter what your political affiliations are, this is a great time to, to ask somebody to lunch. You don't have to talk about politics, talk about something else, but just, you know, reconnect with people. I think this is a great time for reconnection. 100%. And today is just a uh, uh, national uh, kindness. kindness day. And this is, this is the opportunity reach across that aisle 
high five them, hug them, open the door, say have a good day uh, to someone because that can truly impact somebody's mental health. Something as simple as opening the door, something as simple as have a great day or buy that cup of coffee for somebody that's out the counter with you. It's those simple, simple, random acts of kindness that has a ripple effect on our world. Good stuff. It could make somebody's day and who knows you know, where we can go from there. Absolutely. Robert White with the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. My Help pleasure. Be well.